Well, Donner, how you doing? Good. Good, thanks. After going through the ups and downs of this season, what was the ultimate meaning for you? Sorry, what was your uh, question? Okay. <laughs> after, after going through the ups and downs of, of this season as a group, what was the ultimate meaning for you? I mean, it obviously sucks that we're speaking here right now today. Um, nothing against you guys, but <laughs> this is not the time when you want to be doing these uh, exit interviews and um, final closure media things and things like that. So um, I thought that there was a lot of great moments in the season, but um, there was uh, too many bad ones that we couldn't make up for. So, so I think we're just leaving with a lot of disappointment and um, not that it was a waste of a season, but um, I think there's just a lot of moments that we can kind of look back on and um, learn from and um, hopefully forget about them really quickly, but also learn where, where we went wrong. And um, it's not easy to point it to one thing, but I think um, just overall it's just really frustrating that we came in with such high hopes and obviously mm -hmm. such high expectations from last year. Um, and weren't able to meet those. What was the toughest part with missing the chunk of games that you did miss over the last couple of months? Well, a lot of it was always out of my control, so that, that always sucks. As you know, it's not that you're out of shape or something like that or um, not finding a place for yourself in the lineup. It's, it's really frustrating to, to know I was doing everything I could at um, all three of those stretches. So it's disappointing to miss hockey. It sucks to see... Um, the team going through it and not succeeding and not being able to be out there and helping them. Um, so I take a lot of accountability of that and um, knowing that I'm a big piece of this team and knowing that um, I just got to do whatever I can this summer to make sure that I'm healthy and ready for next year to, to bring in my best again. How close were you here at the end to feeling like you were back to 100%? Yeah, really close. Uh, I think everyone did everything they could for me. Um, medical staff and, and trainers and doctors were amazing all year for me and for everyone else so there's no disappointment in them and um, no one should ever look at them as a disappointment for for my situation they were they were really good for me and um, I just think it was obviously tough timing right now and not not the time of the year when you want to be missing games when you're making a, a push to make the playoffs is there anything you can say about kind of what happened to you there in terms of what the injury was uh, I mean, you can probably look at the videos and make your own assumptions, so I'm not really going to get into it too deeply, but uh, yeah, just something that wasn't really an injury that I wanted to mess with, um, not something that you could really play through and um, jeopardize myself or or even the team's performance. I never want to go into a game not feeling 100%. It's not fair to me. It's not fair to my teammates and my coaches, so um, that was the ultimate decision on that. One thing, did, did you feel um, as, as the season went on and got later in the year, like the messaging was, was still resonating in the room as, you know, especially as you guys started to realize that you kind of weren't in, the, weren't in the playoffs and all that, like how did that kind of land from the coaching staff? Like, do you mean, do, do we take in their messages? Like, were we listening like and yeah. like taking it in? Yeah, I thought throughout the whole year we were, we responded to what they said um, the same way throughout the whole year, I think. There's only so much a coach can say, realistically, if you want to point fingers around the room, it's easy to do. Um, it ultimately comes down to the guys in the dressing room, and we're the ones out there um, that need to do what it takes to win. Um, so yeah, I think there's obviously moments in the in the season where there's tension and um, between players and, and everything with so many distractions and outside noise and so much pressure when like you said, it's time to push for the playoffs, and um, the messages are very direct and, and very intense. But um, by no means was the dressing room lost. There's, you can go around and ask anybody. Everyone's very friendly with each other and loves each other in the dressing room and respects each other and plays hard for each other. But um, I think guys have said it in other interviews. Hack said it in interviews. Um, I think we were we outworked ourselves in some aspects. We didn't work smart. We worked hard every night. But um, I think strategically um, and in the system, sometimes we weren't 100 percent there. So um, yeah, I don't think you can say it was it was a, a message from the coaches that was that was a problem. You can 
look at any team that struggles and doesn't make the playoffs, um, that maybe the coaches lose the dressing room or anything like that. I've been on teams that haven't made playoffs. I've been on championship teams. So I've seen it all. It always comes down to the players in the room. With that being said, how frustrating was it for you guys that you weren't able to find that standard of play that you wanted to have as regularly as you were hoping to see it this year? Yeah, absolutely. And consistency wasn't a strength of ours. Everyone saw that, and uh, especially in our home stints, it was it was tough to uh, to hang your jersey up at the end of the night and and just dis- disappointment a lot of the time, knowing that the fans showed up every single night and. Um, probably walking into the stadium a lot of those nights they didn't really know what they were going to get from us and um, not that we only play for them but they're a huge t- piece to that and um, we need them behind us and I think it's frustrating to uh, to disappoint them and um, yeah it's just tough to uh, to see all what we kind of left on the table it's just so much opportunity for a lot of players that came in here um, like it was for me my first year here um, and I think just some of us didn't push push it as well as we should have including myself um, I always expect more out of myself and that's what I'll do next year. Vince how will your uh, summer training change with the coming back from the and out and having the injury? should be pretty similar I have a great team at home and I'll continue to rehab the same way I was towards the end of the season um, I think Going into last summer, uh, it's very different when you have those extra couple of weeks taxed onto your season, but this summer is looking very similar. I'll probably keep pushing it now for a little while and keep my body um, pushed to my limits just as if I was in the playoffs. So it should be pretty similar. I'm not worried about next season, and I'm really confident going into the summer that I can improve my game um, off the ice too and uh, hopefully learn where even I went wrong this season. There's always places to learn, no matter how successful a season can be individually. You always want to push yourself to be better next year. There's always so much competition coming up, as you've seen with the younger guys this year. Um, so that's exciting to see them and exciting to see the push from them next year. What do you think you guys need to do to, to get the offense to, to spark back to life like it was maybe a year ago? Yeah, I think being a little bit <clears throat> more assertive, more tenacious, I think. Scoring goals um, that aren't so pretty is something that we really need to look on. I think offensively we controlled the puck a lot, but we weren't very much of a threat. Uh, I think we're very much a perimeter team this year and possess the puck well, but that doesn't always create things. And I think um, we need to create more high scoring opportunities, and those usually lead to second chances and things like that. So. Um, that's a whole kind of other aspect to look into right now. I think everyone's kind of trying to take a deep breath right now. And um, I think there will be <clears throat> obviously a few changes next year with the roster and guys' contracts expiring. So that's always interesting to see who we'll bring in and who will unfortunately be uh, gone next year. Like I said in previous question there, there was no tension in the locker room, so it always sucks to see the changes in the locker room after a season. And usually, after a season that doesn't go too well, there there is a few changes. So um, that always sucks, but that's part of the business. Now, sometimes that guys usually talk around the league as far as places to play. I mean, what message do you have for other guys who may not know much about this town, but what you've experienced over three years of, as far as what it means to play here? Yeah, it means everything to this town to have sports here. If you've uh, ever been to another sporting event it's just the same as ours it's intense it's it's an atmosphere that's not really like many other stadiums I think when people come to watch our games you can see how much they really do love watching us and um, unfortunately some of these bigger markets you see a lot of people that aren't really watching the games they're more there for for other things but I, I truly believe that people come to watch us and, and cheer us on and that's amazing and um, having the support in the city and uh, the support from our ownership and every uh, every possibility like there's just so many things outside of hockey here too as you see the drive and economics and things like that there's there's so much more to hockey out here and people find a lot of things to do on their own time which is very nice to see that guys have found new hobbies coming into the city when they didn't know too much about it um, I think 
the rain is obviously a concern for people, but um, <laughs> you see right now you already getting your first little bit of summer. Um, so I think you just kind of got to block that out and really appreciate how good we do have it here and walking into these beautiful facilities and being treated right, being fed right, having the, the best equipment, the best stadium you could ever imagine. So there's no shortage of of what you need to do to perform and, and be happy, um, be in a place where you can succeed. So we have all the tools we could ever imagine here. Um, and sometimes those things you don't really realize how good you have it until you're in a place like this. So I'm very thankful that I've been part of this organization since the start and seen what we've built and even the improvements they do uh, day to day to, to make it even better. You're always in awe. So I think just for players, um, they should be excited to to want to come here. Um, there's never too much pressure outside of the city. When Whenever you step out on the ice, you don't have um, people heckling at you and everyone's just always very warm and opening to you when you're walking around town so that's always special too to have their support and to just be able to walk freely and just live your life um, as you should away from the rink so there's just so much positivity here and um, I just think there's so much room for success both individually and as an organization and um, as a big piece of the city. And so you uh, mentioned the younger guys earlier I just wanted to get your thoughts on Riker's play and his presence in the room with this team this year. Yeah he made a pretty big statement for himself he played a pretty significant role when I was out and um, even when I was in the lineup he was always pushing on my side and um, bringing the best out of me so I thought he did a great job this year coming in and understanding the the next level that he has to get to to be a very good defenseman in this league um, which he's shown um, many times over and certainly showed in the American League so I think he's uh, he's an interesting cat in the dressing room we're still trying to figure them out, so <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll get a few more moments away from the rink to try to see what more I can get out of him. He's very, seems pretty introverted. He's super, uh, <laughs> super organized to say the least. So, um, but no, he's he's very respectful, very good kid, works hard. Um, everyone loves playing with him and being around him, and um, I think just being a good person and. Um, being a hard worker is everything you can ask for a young guy. Well, thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. 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 Thanks, Sarah.